Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with our next topic which is on Visual Administrator in SAP. So let's connect to the system and I'll show you what this particular terminology is and what this tool is all about. Okay, so let's start. Let me show you how to start this particular tool. So let me click on computer then let's go to our location where we have SAP installed go to user SAP the seed name and under that look for JC01 JC01 is the folder in NetWeaver 7.01 and below and from 7.31 onwards 7.3 onwards in fact it is J01 okay so let me click on j to e folder under that you can look for admin okay so from 7.3 onwards this visual admin has been taken out and it is replaced by nwa that is netweaver administrator tool so let me click on the admin interface right now okay under the admin interface here you can look for the go okay this ghost if you just right click run as administrator and it will start the j to e's visual administrator here you can see this is the j2e engine visual administrator okay now you get a screen where it is asking for connect to sap j2e engine okay so if you just click on connect it will ask for the password okay so before that i just wanted to show you guys in case if you want to create a new connection okay you can just type some name say this is the name that you will see for connection say for example i want to connect as pp1 name okay then i can look up using message server host name you can give the host name okay then the port number in this case is phi after that it is your system number after that it is 04 okay and then just save this okay you will see this particular entry created okay there will be one default entry will always be there so and this is the entry that you have created depending on different users you have so they can have different set of connections okay so once we s select any of them and connect here you can see that this is connecting as the username at gt underscore admin and password we need to give the password okay let me supply the password Okay, once you give the password, it will try to connect to the system. Okay, and once it is connected, what you are seeing here on the left side, you have one dispatcher is there, one server zero is there, and if you have multiple servers, you will see the other servers as well, depending on how many servers you have in your system. Okay, so this is basically, you just saw that, what is the binary, how you can scroll to the visual administration location and start it using go dot bat file and once you are there it will ask for the connection you can create a new connection if you have multiple users they can use their own connections and once they give the username and password you will see the connection which is showing a dispatcher a server zero and server one and other servers if they are there so it d all depends on how many servers you have in your environment okay so let's see so the next thing is that I wanted to show you guys is let's say you can go to this particular tab called connect tab you you have only logout login if you go to the tools window you have properties tab and you can export this as well this particular entire configuration can be exported out okay so that is on the 
these particular high level screens now let's connect into this particular system let's go to the dispatcher okay on the dispatcher if you just click on the dispatcher it will show you the version of dispatcher the kernel version the id of this particular dispatcher the host ip and the other information okay so the next thing what we will do is i'll just show you that what is there in server 0 if you click on server 0 it will give you the this particular id which is critical okay so that is on the dispatcher side let's let me show you the rest of the information so basically the key things in this particular thing what you need to take note is the different ports that is used so let's go to the global configuration say for example here you can see the dispatcher is there you have the server is there okay so here you can see the kernel related services and these are the different services which is there okay so that is on the global configuration so the key protocols basically they are the http protocol you have p4 protocol you have telnet protocol you have sdm protocol so let's start with http so http is basically let me write it down here okay so the key things that we are discussing is first thing is about the http protocol okay so http protocol in general it uses a port called phi then is the system number and then 00, zero. so this is the port on which the http connection listens next thing that i was referring to is the p4 port p4 port as the name indicates it has number ending in 4 so it is 5 then this is your system number and this is 0, 04 next key port in this is telnet port telnet port basically is 5 then you have the system number and after that it is 0, 08 okay next thing is about the sdm port okay in sdm you will find 5 then system number and this is 18 okay so that is the port on which the sdm listens so we have started the visual admin okay so we have gone to the global server configuration and if we expand this particular server folder okay so let's go to this particular server folder here you can see it has different services kernel interfaces libraries okay so let's go to the key services that we wanted to see okay select the server instance fine then what we'll do is we'll go to the click on this particular thing called kernel and here you will see the different different parameters that can be tuned for this particular kernel okay here you can see things like cache manager okay so the next thing is about the different act different property sheet that is there say let's say cluster manager okay in cluster manager you can see some of the key things that is element dot name okay so this is the name of the server element dot type okay element dot join port which is telling that on which port it is listening okay so then these are the things which can be tuned over here Okay, the next key thing is about the thread manager so let me show you about the thread manager thread manager it is there on both the dispatcher and the server 
Okay, so this is basically important from the performance point of view. Okay, here you can see these are the different parameters which can be tuned using a thread manager. Okay, so in thread manager you can see things like maximum th thread count, you can see things like initial thread count, okay so here let's go to the next item which is http provider in this so for http provider here you can see it's a global configuration under global configuration you can see dispatcher and under dispatcher is the http provider okay so in http provider you can maintain the different parameters Okay, so here these are the different parameter that is there say for example you have the port which is one key thing here okay then you have the different session timeout parameters is there okay then trace activity whether you are enabling or disabling the trace for the dispatcher so that is about the http provider Okay, so the next thing is let's go to the next activity here in this which is security provider okay here you can see this is the security provider okay here you can define different things like uh, select we need to select the runtime for this one okay security provider what we need to do is we can go to the services tab and under services tab is we have the security provider so dispatcher there is nothing defined let's go to the, to the same thing on the server side server side if we go to the services and under that look for security provider okay so this is security provider it's an alphabetical order so it's pretty straightforward okay so under that there are two things one is the runtime activity and so let's see the runtime activities for this okay so these are the key values that is there unicode log or crypto admin who is the administrator for the crypto okay so another thing that can be done here is the user management so let me go to the crypto tab give me a second let's go to the cluster under cluster let's go to the services and under services we will see the SSL provide security provider okay so it's in alphabetical order just select for the security provider okay here is the security provider okay in this particular tab so we saw the security provider under global configuration okay under dispatcher under server and under cluster configuration so in these three different categories we look for the security provider okay so under runtime we see these activities as well so these are the different security mechanisms that is available okay here you can see there is a user management is there policy configuration okay so user management how we can manage the users if suppose we want to search a particular user we can search it from here okay then we can do a manage the security roles policy configurations okay security roles are there we can manage these roles okay so this is about the security configuration okay so that is on the security provider okay the next activity that i will be talking it about the portal runtime okay so let's go to the global configuration and under global configuration let's look for 
server instance fine and under that let's look for the services okay we are in services okay under that let's look for com.sap.portal.prt okay here you can see com.portal.sap.prt.sapg2e okay so this basically is the portal deployment portal content directory that is the pcd okay pcd is very critical for portals so that's where this is plays a major role okay you can change your timeout and pool size values in this particular tab okay so that is about the portal runtime parameters okay next thing is let's go to something called component build service okay so component build service this thing you will find under services we can look for component build service so this is not here in this one but you will find this in a development in a di basically where you have the development infrastructure created so if you have nwdi you will find that component okay that is on the component build service okay next thing is about the configuration adapter okay so let's go to the configuration adapter which is below this okay configuration adapter here you can define the different adapters okay so in this particular case let's go to the cluster and let's look for the same thing which is configuration adapter okay so in configuration adapter here you can see under runtime you can see the different offline values here you can see the configurations can be opened properties is there additional information okay but in the additional information you can find different protocols like p4 and all okay the key thing is on the runtime what are the runtime values for this okay it can be configured here okay so here we can see things like HTTP host is there you can see this is the default host okay you can see things like CTC is there okay the next thing is on the display cache content okay cache content is pretty important because a lot of images are there and if we don't cache them it comes directly from the system which makes it's slower so that is one reason why we look for the cast information okay so the next activity in this is the connector that is connector container okay so let's look for the connector container okay this is below this is the connector container okay so this gives the entire runtime information that is connected to the server okay so that is about the connector container then the next thing is connector factory in okay here we saw the connector container all right okay next thing we can see is the deploy tab over here so this deploy tab shows which are the applications deployed on on the server and what you can do here is you can select and deploy the application or you can select and start the deployment as well okay so that is about the deploy part next thing is about the jco that is java connectors so let me take you to the jco 
okay here you can see the Jayco RFC provider okay so this is about the Jayco RFC provider okay here there are different other tabs are there so under Jayco what you can do is you can create these the Jayco programs over here okay so that is about the Jayco so in Jayco as well you can do key storage so let's go to the key storage part okay so let me scroll down okay so under global configuration server instance services and under that is our Jayco RFC provider key key storage this is the key storage that is there okay so this is empty but we can use it to create keys okay so that is on the key storage same thing we can find it under cluster as well Okay, Jayco provider and the key storage over here. So in this particular key storage tab, let's go to the key storage. Here you will see the different keys that is there. Okay, you can create a new keys as well. You can create a logon pair. You can load it from the file. So different. This is the place from where you can generate the CSR. Okay, so generation of CSR happens from here. Okay, then yeah I think this is pretty much and another admin activity that is mainly associated with is sometimes the account gets locked okay so in that particular case what you need to do is you can just go to the security provider user management tab and change the account there itself so let me show you how it happens so let's go to the security provider that we just saw some time back okay so let's go to the security provider okay under security provider let's go to the user management tab okay under user management tab you can just search for the user okay so it depends on what type of authentication you are using if you are using a basic authentication then you can use that particular process okay then here there are different components are there we are using a lab based authentication so you won't find the locking mechanism defined here but this is one screen where you can come and unlock the users okay so that's what i wanted to cover in this particular training session thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye